Putting it all together in 7.6, applications of dot product and cross product. A couple things to remember before we move on. Dot product is a scalar quantity. And cross product gives us a, is a vector quantity. Okay, uh, we use the cross product in order to determine uh, the torque or the moment of something. So one of the formulas that we're going to be using is tau, the vector tau, which is the moment or the torque, is equal to r cross f. And in this situation, it'd be like uh, a bolt again, and you've got a wrench, and this length here, the length of the wrench, the distance here is R, and the force being enacted on it is F, okay? Use the right-hand method to determine whether or not the torque uh, is bringing the nut down into the page or if it's loosening up off of the page. And uh, another concept that is helpful to determine is um, obviously the length of R is significant. So if we were to apply force here, we need a lot more force in order to do the same amount of work as applying a force here. Okay, A lot less force needs to be applied at the end. That's why the longer the wrench, the more torque you have, uh, the greater mechanical power you have uh, working for you rather than spinning the nut by hand. Okay. The last thing I want to note is about these two vectors. R, uh, that's a distance, okay? So that's going to be measured in meters. It represents the arm. This is the arm, the length of the arm. Uh, so the magnitude, I guess, is the length of the arm in meters. The force vector is measured in newtons, just like we've been doing. And then T, which is the torque, it's a vector measurement because it's cross product, is measured in newton meters, newton meters or n dot m okay that's a symbol for newton meters that's what we're going with uh let's get right into it i'll leave that up there to give us some guidance for example one because example one is dealing with this we have a wrench uh we're finding torque find torque Okay, we have a wrench. It's being used to tighten a bolt. We have a force of 60 newtons applied clockwise in the direction, uh, direction at 80 degrees to the handle. 80 degrees to handle. And the handle is 20 centimeters. So the force is being applied 20 centimeters from the center of the bolt. 20 centimeters from the center of the bolt. All right, there's our information. We are going to A, calculate the magnitude of the torque, and then B, tell the direction uh, which direction is the torque vector pointing. It's either pointing down in tightening it together or up off the page loosening loosening this nut. All right, here we go. We have our formula. So first thing we need to do is remember that the distance, the length of the arm needs to be measured in meters. We've been given it in centimeters, okay? So I'm going to convert 
20 centimeters, that equals 0 0.2 meters. And now I'm going to translate F so that it is tail to tail with R. One, convert, two, translate, move, translate the vector F so it is tail to tail with R. And the angle between them then is going to be 80 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to, I have my force vector. It's pushing down clockwise, just like this picture is. Okay, I'm going to draw it again, just a simplified version of it. So here's our wrench. It is 20 centimeters or 0 0.2 meters. And tail to tail, our force is going to be working. It's 60 newtons. And the angle in between them is 80 degrees. Okay, so all I did was I took, if I'm imagining that this is my wrench, here's my nut. The force is actually going to be applied down here. Okay, but I'm translating that so that I have them tail to tail. Yeah. And then I have an angle in between them. Uh, if I want to show that, then the original force is kind of pushing like that, right? 60 newtons. And this angle is 80 degrees. So this angle is 80 degrees. And then we go to our formula. We've got the magnitude of ta is equal to the magnitude of r times the magnitude of F, times the sine of the angle in between them. That is our cross product, okay? Right there. Fill in what I know. R is 0 0.2, F is 60, angle in between them is 80. Carefully in the calculator, 11.8. So the torque, the torque has a magnitude, magnitude of approximately 11.8 Newton meters. Now, which way is this pointing? Well, if I use my right hand method, we're going to come in along the force hook around the direction of the wrench and my thumb is pointing in. Okay, so this is being tightened. The bolt is being tightened. Uh, B. Direction. By the right hand rule The bolt is being tightened. Example two is dealing with a projection. So we have to remember projection is that uh, going to be an application of the cross product or an application of the dot product. And it is going to be an application of the dot product. Uh, we are going to determine the projection and its magnitude projection and magnitude of V which is given as 4 to 7 on U which is given as 6 3 8 okay so we have two Cartesian vectors and they're given in three space, the three dimensional vectors, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z components. And uh, this works very similar to, we haven't done a three dimensional dot product, I don't think, uh, but it works very similar to those in two space. And we end up actually using the exact same formula. Formula looks like this. Projection. 
projection of v onto u is equal to v dot u over u dot u, close it off, times u, okay? So this is going to give the magnitude of it, and this is in the direction of u, okay? So it's v onto u, so u is going to be the direction. All right, sub in what we know, we've got v dot u, so we've got 4, 2, 7, dot, 6, 3, 8, over u dot u, 6, 3, 8, dot, 6, 3, 8, and I'm going to make sure we're multiplying that by u, 6, 3, 8, that's going to give us our direction. Now in our next part, uh, we're taking the dot product of the top. The dot product of the bottom is easier because it is u dot u, so it's u dot itself, uh, which if I just do that part quickly, it ends up being 6 squared plus 3 squared plus 8 squared. 6 squared plus 3 squared plus 8 squared. Up here, we end up with 4 times 6, 2 times 3, 7 times 8. So again, some of the, the trickiest parts about this is going to be not mixing up your formulas and how to do your uh, cross product with your dot product. 6, 3, 8. Uh, reducing the numerator, we get 86. And the denominator is 109. So we have 86 over 109. And it is in the direction of 6, 3, 8. Eight. Now, if we need the magnitude of this projection, so this is the projection itself, this is the vector, and if we need the magnitude of that vector, we're simply taking projection of v onto u, the magnitude of it, we're just taking the magnitude of this expression here, 86 over 109 in the direction of 6, 3, um, this 86 over 109 is already uh, just a scalar value, okay? So when we rewrite this, it's just going to be 86 over 109, and then we just have to multiply that by the magnitude of 6, 3, 8. The only time this is significant would be if uh, the if this was in the opposite direction of u, uh, so if this was negative value, then the magnitude, magnitude doesn't care if you're, sorry, if this was negative, magnitude doesn't care if you're positive or negative, it's going to make it all positive because it's just a, a measurement of the distance. You can't have a negative distance or a zero distance, okay? Uh, following this through, we're getting the magnitude of this vector right here. So we just have a scalar multiple of a vector. So this is, this is an expression of what we said. Uh, the projection of it is uh, u equals kv, something like that, okay, some scalar multiple of u, because the projection will lie right on top of the vector u, which is why it's going in the same direction. Okay, uh, this is 86 over 109 times the square root of 6 squared plus 3 squared plus 8 squared, which is... 86 over 109 times the square root of 109. Throw that in your calculator, you get approximately 8.2. So the magnitude of the vector is 8.2. Example 3, we're dealing with mechanical work in 3 space, so it's going to be the work being performed, or the work being done. Uh, is that cross product or dot product? It's going to be working with the dot product. So we have a force with units in newtons. It's defined by force 300 in the x direction, 700 in the y direction, 500 in the z direction. It acts on an object with displacement in meters defined by 
3, 1, 12. Okay, so you can think about this on your uh, octant, uh, your eight kind of room grid that gets drawn with these three-dimensional Cartesian hyperplanes. Uh, this is the, the directional vector, and this is the force being applied to make that happen. And so we are going to, A, determine the work done. Determine work done in direction direction of travel. Again, if you think about it in two space, you basically you have a, a vector going one way. This is the, the direction of displacement. And then you have a force uh, being acted on it. And you're basically saying, well, how much, let's say, I don't know, this force is being doing that. You're saying, well, how much, uh, what is this force doing in this direction? Okay. So we're looking at this component, but we're in three space. Okay. Well, work is the product or the dot product of F and S. So we know this already that work done, which is not a vector quantity, is equal to the dot product F dot S. Well, the dot product is the magnitude of F times the magnitude of S times the cosine of the angle in between them. The vector F, so I'm taking the magnitude of the vector F, uh, magnitude of F dot S, so I've got 300 comma 700 comma 500 dot 3112 and dot product is x1 uh, not x1 y1 sure you could say that a1 b1 or f f there we go f1 s1 is 300 times 3 f2 s2 700 times 1 plus F3 S3. 900 plus 700 plus 6,000, we get 7,600. And so, therefore, work done in direction of travel is 7,600 joules is a measure of our work done. In B, in B, we want to determine the work done against gravity. Okay, determine work done against gravity. Well, what does that mean? Well, if we're thinking about our x, y, z plane, then the work done against gravity is only going to deal with the vertical components of F and S, okay? Gravity is pulling down on the object, and we can see that the force, because uh, the vertical component is uh, positive and positive, we can see that we are moving this up against gravity and we're using a force, uh, an upward force on this object. So when we're talking about work against gravity, we're just talking about the vertical components, okay? So we've got, uh, I'll make a little note, consider only the vertical components. So we're dealing with F, and all we have to think about for the vertical components of F is 0, 0, 500. And for S, the vertical component is 0, 0, 12. 
So now if we take the work done against gravity, we're taking the work of just the vertical components. So we've got work is equal to F dot S, which is only the vertical components. Now we've got 0, 0, 500 dot 0, 0, 12. So we've got 0 times 0 plus 0 times 0 plus 500 times 12, which equals 6,000 joules. So the work performed against gravity is 6,000 joules. Okay, so most of the work being done is just getting this thing up off the ground and then the movement in whatever direction you wanted uh, to go uh, accounts for the rest of the energy needed. In our last two examples, we're going to be dealing with the concept of a triple scalar product. Triple scalar product. This is used in situations where you need a combination of the dot product and the cross product. You're going to end up with a scalar product. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means that um, as so as soon as you do a dot product, remember the dot product results dot results in a scalar, right? And taking a cross product results in a vector quantity. Okay, so if I'm dealing with vectors, let's say I have three vectors, I'm, I'm just writing it out. I'm going to write you a proper definition in a second. But let's say I have A, B, and C, three vectors, and I'm going to perform a, a triple scalar product. I'm going to end up with a scalar. It's a combination of dot and cross product. So I'm going to perform a dot product and I'm going to perform a cross product. Well, which one am I going to have to perform first? If I perform a dot product first, let's say I take the dot product of A and B, what I get is just a scalar. And then I would have a scalar cross a vector. And that doesn't make any sense. Okay? Can't do that. It's not going to result in anything sensible. What if I take, if I have A, B, and C again, and let's say I take the cross product of A and B, I'm going to end up with another vector. In which case, afterwards, I could take the dot product of that vector and C, and I'll end up with a scalar. Okay, so it's important. You're going to be doing a cross product first, then applying the dot product, regardless of what order it's written in. Okay, let me give you a more formal definition here. Uh, certain situations, certain situations require combination of dot product and cross product. This is a uh, triple scalar product is A dot B cross C. So again, this is only meaningful when we perform the cross product first. So you perform the cross product, B cross C, you end up with A dot the cross product of B cross C, which is another vector, and then you take the dot product of that, you end up with a scalar measurement, okay? So let's go ahead and do that in example four. We're just uh, playing with the numbers, uh, two vectors that they give us, three vectors that they give us. And then example five, we're actually applying it to a uh, the volume of a parallelepiped. All right, so what are we going to do? A, uh, they're going to give us, so example four now, maybe I'll write it in red, keep in tune here. U, is the vector 4, 3, 1. V is the vector 2, 5, 6. W is the vector 10, negative 3, negative 14. We are going to evaluate 
evaluate u cross v dot w. Here we go. u cross v dot w. I'm just going to rewrite that using the coordinates, the Cartesian vector coordinates that were given. So we've got vector u, 4, 3, 1, cross v, 2, 5, 6, dot w, 10, negative 3, negative 14. I have to apply the cross product first. Okay, so I'm looking at my formula for the cross product. We're going to end up with uh, taking uh, A2 times B3 minus A3 times B2. So that first part, it's going to be a vector. So we're going to end up with a vector here. Uh, I'm going to have 3 times 6 minus 1 times 5, comma. Then we're going to be looking at u3 times v1, u3 times v1, 1 times 2, minus v3 times u1, 6 times 4. And my last piece is 4 times 5 minus 3 times 2. I have then, after I simplify that, we're going to be taking that and the dot product of that and 10, negative 3, negative 14. So here we have 18 minus 5, that's 13. 2 minus 24 is negative 22. 20 minus 6 is 14. Dot. 10, negative 3, negative 14. Dot product is just uh, 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3. And we are adding those up together. So we've got 13 times 10 plus negative 22 times negative 3 plus 14 times negative 14. Simplify that, we get 0. B asks us to evaluate evaluate W dot U cross V. Okay, let's take a look at this one. We're not actually going to do it. Uh, we're just going to look at it because up here we did U cross V dot W. Here we're doing W dot U cross V. But I know that regardless of which way it's written, I need to perform the cross product first. So I'm actually going to be doing u cross v, and then I'm going to be doing w dot that. Here I did that dot w. Now, uh, if we were doing cross product again, it would matter which value comes first. Okay, uh, If this was cross product, cross product is not commutative. One will be a positive answer, one will be a negative answer. Uh, but the dot product is commutative. So since dot product is commutative, we're just going to write u cross v dot w, which is what we did in A, is equal to what we're asked to do in B, w dot u cross v, and they will both equal zero. In example 4c, we're just asked to think about the significance of the result being zero, okay? Uh, what do we know about dot product? Well, when we take the dot product of something and we get zero, that means that they are orthogonal or perpendicular to one another. So if W is perpendicular to the cross product UV, U cross V, uh, what else does that tell us? Well, the cross product of UV is actually orthogonal or perpendicular to U and V. 
the independent vectors u and v. So if u and v form a plane that the cross product uv is then orthogonal to, goes either uh, up away from off the plane or down past into the negative direction through the plane, and then we took the dot product with w, that would put w back at, and w was orthogonal to that, that would put w on the same plane as the original u and v. So in this case, u, v, and w actually are all on the same two-dimensional plane cutting through our three-dimensional space. Okay, let me say that again. u, v, and w are all three-dimensional vectors but they actually all lie on the same cross-section of our hyperplane. They all lie on the same two-dimensional plane within three-dimensional space because the cross product of any two vectors is orthogonal to both of the two component vectors and when the dot product is zero, if and only if, W is orthogonal to the cross product that's here. So that means W must be on the same plane as u and v. Let me write that in words. u cross v is orthogonal. I keep saying orthogonal, that's probably not right. It's orthogonal to u and to v. And since w dot u cross v equals zero, u v is orthogonal to w, which means u v and w all lie on the same plane. Last example, example five, deals with the volume of a parallelepiede. Uh, I'm saying that wrong too. Parallelepiped. Parallelepiped. I don't know. Carrying on. Okay, so the volume, volume, of a parallel piped is a times h. That's the area of its base times the height. Okay? Area, maybe I'll extend this ring, of base. This is height. All right, so we've got one of these drawn for us. Looks a little bit like this. Something like that, okay? And if I draw, no, that's way too rectangular. Draw that going down like that. Draw that going up like that. Going across like that. All right. So you can see that we have three vectors, okay? We've got, uh, I'm gonna call them vector u, we've got vector v, and we've got vector w. All right, so we are going to show that this can be used, can be found using the triple scalar product of w dot u cross v. Okay, so u cross v. So first I'll find the area of the base. Let's call that u uh, and v are the dimensions there. And I'll just draw that separately for a second. So we're looking at something like that, where we've got u and v, and these, these might be way off, but uh, that's how I drew it. So 
that's what you get. Maybe it'd be better to say this is u and this is v. Now, we know that the area of this is going to be the magnitude of u cross v. And we've already kind of thought of that because cross product u cross v is going to get us this, this value, this component of u. Okay, and that's going to get us, then we'll have a base times a height and the magnitude that will get us the area of that, then we're going to be taking uh, a product, a dot product with W, and that's going to get us the magnitude or the volume of the parallel pipe bed. Okay, so here we go. First things first, we're working in general uh, terms, and so we don't have any exact values here, and we're not going to uh, show it using the triple scalar product. Instead, we're going to do it uh, the other way using right triangles and things like that. So we know that the cosine of theta, which would be the angle between u and v, so maybe I should say what we're doing here, um, the area, the area of parallelogram is the magnitude of u cross v. And we're going to let the angle between w and H, so H is going to be formed in here. Uh, H is going to be formed right here. We let the angle between W and H be alpha. So the cosine of alpha then is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is h over the magnitude of w, which gives us an expression for h. h is then the magnitude of w times the cosine of alpha. So what we have here is just an application of dot product, uh, part of it at any rate. So then the volume of this parallelopiped would be the area of what we've drawn here times the height, which we have our expression here. So area times height. Well, what is this expression? This is u cross v, okay? So we have the magnitude of u cross v, that's giving us the area of the base. And we're gonna multiply it by the height, which is w times the cosine of the angle in between them. And now because these expressions are, uh, because there's multiplication here and here, multiplication is commutative, I can rearrange this as the magnitude of W times the magnitude of the cross product U cross V times the cosine of alpha which is equal to the dot product of w and the dot product of w and u cross v. Okay, here's an expression for u cross v and I don't need to have the brackets here because we're going to perform the cross product first every time because we're going to end up with a scalar product. Now this one uh, our drawing had it in the in the first uh, octant, the positive, positive, positive. But because volume is always going to be positive and negative values uh, don't don't really work, this is always going to be the absolute value of this triple scalar product. That ends lesson seven point six. Your practice problems can be found on page 418, and you'd be responsible to know how to do numbers 1 through 15. 
Thanks for watching. It's the end of Unit 7.